Hello. Our fourth project this semester is Apples and Oranges, Exploration in Wire. This project will explore line, form, and volume in three dimensions. The outcome of your project will be a freestanding wire sculpture in exaggerated scale of a fruit or vegetable from life. So a fruit or vegetable that you have observed and sketched from life, you will then sculpt in wire to an exaggerated scale. For this project, you can only use wire and other tools or devices like welding or soldering are not permitted. But before we discuss the project, I wanna talk a little bit about wire sculpture and wire art and give you a little bit of a background. Wire, wire sculpture art is a form of three-dimensional art made by bending, twisting, and shaping wire. And it refers to the creation of objects made out of wire. Wire has many uses in art from simply creating armatures, uh, used in support and informing, and also in making wire sculptural art in and of itself. The use of metal wire in jewelry dates back to the second dynasty in Egypt and to the bronze and iron ages in Europe. Wire sculpture, a once rare medium, is currently experiencing quite a quiet revolution and resurgence. Artists can make elaborate, detailed sculptures from wire. Wire is a long, thin, flexible strand of metal that is usually made by a process of heating and stretching. It comes in a single strand or several strands twisted together. Wire is made of different materials like aluminum, bronze, copper, or steel, and has different gauges. A gauge is the thickness of the wire's diameter. In wire and in metal, the larger the gauge, the thinner the wire. So again, the larger the number of the gauge, the smaller the thickness of the wire. Often in wire art or in creating wire sculptures, artists will use a thicker wire. So that would be a smaller gauge wire. Using wire in art isn't new. One of the first artists in the United States who brought wire sculpture, wire sculptural art to people's attention was Alexander Calder. Alexander Calder made a series of wire sculptures prominently through the 1920s after he had used wire to experiment in jewelry making. Uh, he created several gestural and almost like contour line like sculptural uh, wire sculptures. Ruth Asawa is another prominent wire artist who wove wire for a living. So in this way, she used wire as a medium to connect, to create a weave where those different elements are connected together to create almost like a metal fiber. She took pieces of metal, weaving them into intricate, delicate, and abstract sculptures. Asawa prominently worked throughout the 50s and died recently in 2013, but her hanging wire sculptures and installations really reshaped art history. Wire is a really versatile medium for artwork. It can be braided, twisted, tied, wrapped, wound around other wires or woven into a loose or tight mesh. Sculptors use wire to create small, delicate works or to create large install installations that can take up and fill a whole room. With wire, you don't need that many materials to actually start creating work, but there are a few basic guidelines that you should follow. When we're working sculpturally, especially when we're working with our hands or working with other tools like pliers, you want to choose a soft, pliable wire. So uh, a wire that is a thicker gauge wire is what you want to go with. If you use a smaller gauged wire, um, it, it might be um, 
it might be stiff, it might be too strong, it might be hard to work with. Um, so a good choice is a armature wire, a soft, flexible wire that is made for use in art. Several different materials, um, uh, or several different wires come in different materials and that thickness and um, pliability also varies. So you really wanna make sure that if you're working with additional wire or getting additional wire, choose one that's specifically an armature wire that is soft and flexible. Again, it comes in many different sizes and thicknesses, and it can be easily worked with by your hands uh, or by tools like pliers or shaping pliers. And you can find these this type of wire, even armature wire, you can find it anywhere from a hobby store like Michael's, you can find it at Blaine's, you can find it locally at the hardware store. Uh, you could also purchase it from Dick Blick, uh, which is a national art distributor. Now the tools, I mentioned a little bit about the tools you will need, and these include wire cutters, which you have in your kits, uh, and also uh, pliers. Several long nose pliers come with a wire cutter uh, in the unit, but you might wanna get rounded pliers or shaping pliers as well. Wire cutters are handheld tools with a sharp, short double blade that are specifically made for cutting many gauges of wire. I will really urge you to use these wire cutters. Even if that wire is a thin gauge and you think you can cut it with scissors, I would really caution you against that. Um, it does tend to dull your scissors and can actually sometimes create chips in the blades of your scissors. So always, always, always use wire cutters, but often those come with the pliers that you, you may already have. Now pliers are handheld tool, hand tools that allow you to pull, bend, and twist the wire more tightly than you could just by your hands. I know sometimes folks use two sets of pliers to get a little bit more of that support, a little bit more leverage, but these will help you have a little bit more control when working with wire. Another note about wire is that you should always have safety glasses or safety goggles on. If you cut an end of that wire, it's gonna be really sharp and it could swing back and injure your eye. Um, so really make sure that when you're cutting wire, you're using goggles. Uh, some wires may also have residues that come off on your finger. So it's always a good note to wear some protective gloves as well. And sometimes gloves will also give you a better grip when you're going to shape the wire. Now, one of the easiest ways to start making a wire sculpture is to just create an outline of an object. In drawing, we might call this a contour line drawing. Really looking at the outline, the hard lines of the object that you can see and really forming that out of wire. Wire has a very linear quality that can give the impression of a pencil or pen drawing translated in three dimensions. So really recreating that idea of a line drawing, but with your sculpt, with your wire medium. Taking a, one example to think about is how you might approach doing a wire sculpture of a car. If you were to take a long piece of wire and bend it into the basic shape of a car, you would have your first impression of that object that you're trying to recreate. Once you have that impression, think about your object, in this case a car, from all sides, and then start shaping your sides accordingly, really looking at the different frames, the different angles that you can see, and replicating that in your wire. You can also cut smaller pieces of wire to reinforce the bottom of the car, to outline the top, and make details like doors and headlights. You may want to use some other colors or other types of wires, whether you're using copper or aluminum, to create different accent pieces or help you conjoining some of the elements together. You can also use your fingers or the pliers to help attach those elements and components onto your main form by twisting their ends to wrap around the main wire. Remember, in this exercise, I don't want you using anything like 
soldering or welding. So you're really going to be using that wire to wrap, not attach upon itself. It does say, take some practice to get the shape you want, and you may need to work at it a few times and to really have some patience. Um, and you want to be careful that you're not crushing the different sections of your sculpture as you're working with it, because it is a very um, soft and bendable material, especially if you're using armature wire. You may also want to consider using several different gauges of wire, depending on the different elements and the different attention you're trying to draw, to draw to the object. Just like in drawing, you may change the thickness of your line uh, to call attention, to create movement or flow. You may want to do that physically, three-dimensionally, using different gauges of wire. It can create really different points of interest. It can help inform the form and give shape to the object. And it can really help to create a really interesting and dimensional piece. Another more challenging way to create wire sculpture art is by using many repeated loops of wire to form a three-dimensional surface. You're essentially wrapping and looping the wire around itself, and this creates more of a density, more of a voluminous image. And you can think about it like you're looking at an hourglass or an egg shape that really has that sense of volume. And what you're going to want to do is take your wire and make a series of parallel loops that run in a horizontal direction. We're trying to create that voluminous shape, varying those by size to create the dimensions of a rounded object. You might need to connect again some small wires in a few places um, to hold the shape together. Those small pieces will act as your uh, joinery parts of this of this piece if you're doing a more repeated loop style. This method um, creates what almost looks like the shape of a continuous line that forms the object shape itself. So you're really creating um, uh, a more dense piece. There's less uh, negative space. You're really filling a lot of that space with the wire line itself and creating that sense of form and shape by the line. Another uh, way to use, uh, to create wire sculpture art is by wire mesh. Um, and so uh, uh, wire mesh are flat sheets of wire that are woven together. It comes tightly woven into pliable sheets. You can get these also at the um, hobby shop or art supply store. And there's different types of wire mesh that you can get. There's more of an art form type of wire mesh um, that is really soft, really pliable, um, very thin wire that is very easy to manipulate. But then you might also be looking at a product like chicken wire that is much denser, much harder, requires a lot more work to manipulate. Um, and that's something that you can easily find at the hardware store. Now, if you're working with wire mesh to make these sculptures, um, you'll have to wear gloves. You'll gather several sheets of the mesh and bend them into a given shape, cutting the mesh where you want a rough end and bending it inward where you want to create more density and a more rounded form. The advantage of wire mesh is that you can overlay layers of mesh to form a more opaque, dense sculpture that doesn't look like it's just an outline. So this really helps to achieve that volume. For this project, I want you to focus more heavily on using wire itself. You can incorporate a wire mesh in a really small way, but I want the majority of the sculpture to be made by wire by an individual wire that you're forming in different ways. So wire mesh is allowed, but very, very minimally. I'd prefer you to use the wire itself. Actually, you're required to use the wire itself. So just to sum up a, a few of the ways that we've talked about approaching uh, wire sculpture and wire art. 
One is by forming the outline of an object. So there we're really thinking about line and form, not much about volume. There's a lot of negative space when you're doing just line work in wire art. Um, and you're really focusing on adding details by using different gauges of wire and tying them or twisting them into place. The other way is to create a more dense, a more rounded, uh, a, a more um, voluminous sculpture. And that's by using the repeatedly looping sections of wire that are parallel and horizontal to each other and doing this and repeating this until your shape is formed. Again, here, you're probably going to be wanting to use a lot of different small pieces of cut wire that are uh, help to hold the shape together. And you can think about ways that you also incorporate these two different techniques. And maybe it's not just an outline, maybe it's not a repeated loop, but maybe it's a combination of both. Maybe you're um, uh, uh, incorporating the scribble method of sketching into your wire work. And so there's a relationship between the positive and negative space. Um, but this is something that you can really explore and practice with. And then finally, again, we talked about wire mesh. Um, wire form is the very pliable, very um, easy to use uh, sheets that you can get um, at the art supply store. And this is where there are flat sheets of woven wire. So wire that's been woven and that as an artist, you form that to create the shape that you want. Um, this is something again, that you want to make sure you're wearing gloves for and that you're bending and shaping the mess, mesh. You're cutting around the mesh where you want to make different um, angles, different uh, elements that have smoother edges or rougher edges. Um, but again, for, this, for the sake of this project, please use wire mesh very, very minimally. The majority of your work, 90, 90 plus percent should be wire itself and not these already woven wire mesh sheets. Now, I just wanted to show you a couple of examples of how contemporary artists use wire in their practice. And so here we're seeing three different works from Elizabeth Varian, Frank Plant, and Fritz Panzer. And they're, all three of these artists are using wire in a very similar way that we might see drawing. Uh, it's a very contour line. Um, it's, uh, it's very uh, much focused on positive and negative space. Um, and uh, we could see these as a line drawing. Um, and then we look at the next three artists that are re really using wire a little bit differently. The way that Samuel Musharu, Yuichi Ikahata, and Sayan Mo Park are using wire is really in a way to create not just form, but also volume and density. They're also working at using this wire to create a sense of expression and representation. Um, so you can see wire is super versatile. It can be uh, rooted in line and uh, outlet contour line, or it can be rooted in creating more volume, more density, and more uh, realistic impressions. Okay, for our uh, fifth assignment. Um, uh, it will be uh, explorations in wire, apples and oranges. So as I introduced, using only wire, I want you to build a freestanding sculpture that is an exaggerated scale of a fruit or vegetable from life. So I do not want your reference to be a photograph. I don't want your reference to be a magazine image. I want your reference to be an orange that you are looking at, um, but it can be any fruit. It can be any vegetable. You're going to create a sculpture that clearly describes line, form, and three-dimensional volumes. So again, thinking about how you can incorporate those different techniques to create not just line, not just form, so we're not just doing an outline of a banana, but that overall volume of the banana. How are we giving the sensation that this exaggerated sculpture has the same density, has the same weight, has the same dimension as the banana that we're looking at? 
Now the overall size of your form must be between 12 and 36 inches. So it's gotta be exaggerated. If you wanna make it larger, go for it. But 12 to 36 is your target. And so I don't want it to be smaller than 12 inches. Um, again, it can be larger if you want to do that. Uh, but we're exaggerating that uh, a fruit or vegetable to a scale much bigger than it its original size. So think about that too, when you're picking an object, if you're picking a pineapple, you're gonna have to make a much bigger sculpture um, because it will have to be exaggerated. In addition to making your sculpture, I want you to make a series of six charcoal, Conte crayon or ink drawings of your fruit or vegetable from six different points of view. These are three-dimensional forms. We have to be thinking about them from every angle. So I really want you to study your object and I want you to sketch it and make six different drawings from six different points of view. And you're gonna turn these drawings in. So I, want, I do want you to spend some time and some care in producing those drawings. For capturing your work, it has to be photographed in at least two ways, but more is always appreciated, and you will be submitting your six sketches. So I want you to show one photograph from the front, one from the back, and then submitting your six sketches. You can do six sketches on one sheet. In a, uh, I'll show an example in just a moment, or you could do six different sketches on different sheets of paper. That's up to you. Um, you may also want to include a video or other detailed shots of your work. And again, these are freestanding sculptural objects, so they must be able to stand or suspend on their own. Some things I want you to think on as you're creating this work. How will you use both line and volume in your sculpture? What technique will you use? Will you focus on more refined line work and how you repeat that line and use that line to create more of a shape and form? Will you use the wrapping and looping technique? Will you focus on wire knotting? Uh, or will you use scribble or kinked wire like, um, like these examples are? Is color or size of wire important to you? What type of representation are you interested in? Something that's more realistic, something that's a little bit abstracted or non-representational. How are you intending to communicate your object and how can you do that in interesting ways? Um, thinking about positive and negative space. Um, we're just using wire, we're not using any other mixed media. So that negative and positive space relationship is going to be really, really important in your sculptures. Okay, and we're getting really down to the wire here. Um, this is your last project other than your final. So um, if you want my feedback, get to your in-process images and by the deadline. Otherwise, I might not be able to give you feedback. Um, so again, this is your last project before we get to the final. Um, you'll have just a couple weeks. So uh, make sure that you're managing your time really well and, um, and, not, and, and getting a head start on this. And lastly, I just wanted to share a few samples from previous student works. You could see here a couple students did their six drawings of their fruit um, on one sheet of paper. Several other students have done them separately, so it's really up to you. But you can see these students took time and care to really create some finished drawings. Um, and then you can see the other interpretations of fruit and vegetables here. Okay, uh, let me know if you have any questions. All right, have a great week and good luck on this project and in preparation for your final.